I'm back. Off Creek Garage, Australia. You know the drill. Okay, before we before we unboxing this package here, well, thank you so much for all your comments in regards to the video I made explaining the situation here with the Off Creek Garage, with my contract to export solar energy to the grid, and with the plans to connect the house as well to the battery as a future goal. Quite some of you have suggested that I just need a hybrid inverter, which would solve the problems and which would work with my setup here. Well then, let me explain what is going on with the hybrid inverters. You got your hybrid inverter, you got your solar connected, solar feeds into the hybrid inverter, powers your load and charges the battery. If there is no solar, battery feeds the hybrid inverter and powers your load. If there is no battery either, the grid comes in and powers your load and can also charge your battery. Well, I explained in my video that I have 5 kilowatt solar array here, which exports to the grid at the moment. And I'm getting 54.2 cents per kilowatt hour, which I'm exporting to the grid. Can you imagine what a hybrid inverter would do if there would be 5,000 watts of solar pushing into the output of the inverter? Exactly. Lots of smoke, a quick spark, and the hybrid inverter is gone. These hybrid inverters can not deal at all with energy going into the output of the inverter. It will just destroy it. So, unfortunately, a hybrid inverter is not the solution. Well, I did some more research and found the Victron Energy ESS, the Energy Storage System. And here as well, we've got a hybrid inverter connected to our loads, connected to a battery and connected to the grid and connected to solar. What this device can do though, is it can deal with solar and PV here at this point. It can deal with solar and PV here at this point, And this is exactly my situation. And it also can deal with solar and PV here on the DC side, which is my situation as well. So the MultiPlus, the MultiPlus 2 and the Quattro inverters from Victron can actually do what I need. At least that's what I thought. I did some more research and did a lot of reading in forums. And the problem is here with these devices, they are always trying to keep this extra meter what they have in here to check if there's energy coming in or not. These devices are trying to keep these meters at zero. So how this works in a Victron system is this solar and this inverter here produces AC. It supplies power to your load and it also supplies power to the MultiPlus. The MultiPlus uses this power to charge the battery. If there is still surplus energy, it will feed it back into the grid, which is fine. Only problem is here, I'm getting 54.2 cents per kilowatt hour I'm feeding back into the grid. I don't want to use this solar here and charge my battery. Never, ever, ever. This solar needs to have priority to go back into the grid. And I cannot find any information at all if this is actually possible. The second problem with the setup is the solar on my garage charges the battery. The battery is connected to the MultiPlus, which converts it to AC and push it into your load again. I cannot have this unless this solar here is not working as per contract. I'm only allowed to use an alternative energy source to power my loads if the solar receiving this high feed in tariff is not working. At night, during a blackout, if it's not working, if I turn it off, then it's fine to use the battery and the inverter to power my house, but not as long as this one is pushing energy back into the grid. I cannot even take parts of the house offline and supply them from the battery down here. It is not allowed. 
This would increase the energy I'm feeding back into the grid from the solar and they need to pay me more money. People have done this. That's why the contract exists. So as far as I can see, this is partly working, but I'm not sure about the programming of the MultiPlus or the Quattro or the MultiPlus 2. If there is a timer setting where I can actually set if this PV is not working, use this energy source to power your load. If your battery is empty, use the grid. Well, and then there is still the problem with the meter. I would need to install a meter in the main power line going to my house. So this is a meter after the official meter you have with your energy supplier. And this is potentially something this is potentially something which you should not do yourself anymore. Um, so you need an electrician to install this extra meter. This electrician needs to have permission to install this meter, of course, with your energy supplier, because this is a major upgrade or a major change in your electricity supply chain. And I'm not sure if the energy supplier will agree to install this extra meter and install all this gear behind it with extra solar, with extra batteries and with a MultiPlus where the, where, the, where the energy supplier doesn't know what the MultiPlus does. He, they don't understand what we are trying to do. They live in an easy world. You know, you have got solar on your house, you power your house with the solar and any excess gets exported for 54 cents per kilowatt hour. If you build such a system now in between, I cannot see they are keeping the contract. They will always say, well, you're using your batteries, but maybe I'm wrong, you know, I don't know, but I don't want to risk that. But all these are major changes in your electricity cabling, in your electricity supply. And I'm not sure if you can explain this to your energy supplier in a way that they are happy with it and say, hmm, that makes sense what Andy is doing there. Okay, go ahead. So, well, I did some more. In well, and then I did some more. I did some more investigation and well, I got this parcel with this funny sticker here on top of it. And I want to show you what's in there. Because this could be the solution. So I found this device here which is on the market for several years already. And I think a lot of people, a lot of you guys actually know this device already. And I think two or three actually suggested this to me in under this um, last video. So I want to introduce you to, to here. Okay, let me, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, all right. Okay, there it is. Accessories, accessories, cables. Okay, well, here it is. Here it is. Yep, yeah, exactly. This is the Sun grid tie inverter here. Yeah, well, this is a grid tie inverter. It's not a hybrid inverter. Okay, it comes with all these accessories here, some cables and everything. Well, let me get my whiteboard and I'll show you exactly what this inverter does. Well, me. Let me reintroduce this stupid light here. This was point of discussion from one of the last videos here. And you may remember when I said, well, eventually we will have more inverters here connected to the battery, to the off-grid system, which feed power back into L2, L3, which feeds to my house. But again, I'm only allowed to use them when it's dark and the solar on top of the house is not operating, it's not feeding energy back in. Well, and one of these inverters is exactly is exactly this one here. It is a two um, is a two kilowatt inverter. Okay, so how this inverter works is well, there you can see the battery terminals on this side, as you always have with a inverter. So it is connected to our off grid. It is connected to our big battery, and feeds into L two. And another inverter feeds into L3, which are both connected to my house. And as soon as they start firing, I will have power inside my house from these inverters here. As you can see, we are also connected to the grid on the other side. So 
there's also power going this way and back into the grid, which is totally strictly forbidden, of course, because I would get the 45 cents per kilowatt hour I'm feeding back for my battery. Certainly, certainly not allowed, right? And that's why this inverter comes with a, a, um, an accessory which looks like this. This is called a CT or a current transformer. So what you do, you open this one here and let's say this is the cable from your meter to your house and you just put this clamp around this cable and connect this cable to your inverter. What it does is, I'll just take this off again here. It is very similar to our clamp meter here, which we use to measure the amps for our battery stuff. Exactly the same method. So the inverter knows exactly how much power comes in from the grid. And what the inverter now does is, during the night, it measures how much power we are using on one of the actives, one of the phases here for the house. And controls the inverter exactly to deliver that same amount of power we are actually using. So it makes sure there is no power coming in or going out from the grid anymore. So the inverter produces a very tiny, slightly higher voltage than the grid voltage is. So the energy is not coming from here anymore, it's coming from the inverter. And the current goes into our cable and back to the house instead of going this way. So the energy coming in from the grid is going to zero. And all your load gets powered from your internal inverter, powered by your battery. You may have seen that I have my electrical cabinet open all the time because we have an extra cable here connected to our bus bar over there. Well, this is exactly what I had here because I have already one of these inverters and it is feeding power back to the house for the last two weeks. I have bought one of these inverters quite a while back and I said, well, this could be the only chance I have to actually get power back from here to the house without doing any major cabling, any changes in the meter box, any additional cabling, which some of you have suggested, but this is not possible at all. Well, we've got the 50 volt from the battery coming in here to the terminals and here is our clamp sensor connected, which goes in one of these gray conduits there and then in our meter box on the other side of this wall here and it is exactly clamped around the cable which feeds my l2 to the house so the solar is connected to l3 pushing energy out and the clamp is currently connected to l2 directly after the meter and measures the energy coming in so the big question now is as some of you may have how do you connect this inverter to your existing cabling without getting an electrician? Well, this is the super, super easiest way. This inverter does not need an electrician to be connected. What they have done is they have used one of these, these, um, these three pole connectors here they have used. They are very, very common in all kinds of devices and applications, you know, like computers. And, and as you can see, this is our AC out. This is where the power comes out, not goes in, it comes out. And you may wonder, well, if there is power, AC power coming out, like 250 volts, and the contacts are accessible like this, you could touch them, right? Well, no, the inverter does not turn on when you connect your DC over here. It needs actually the AC to be connected down here to power it on and to start it up. It will not start the inverter, of course, and um, you get shocked down here. So these inverters come with their normal 240 volt cabling. And this plugs into, this plugs into the inverter here. Well, and this side goes into your power point. And as soon as you plug this one in, the inverter will start. But the power in this case here goes in the opposite direction. It goes out of this one into your power point. It feeds power into your power point and then into your grid, into your house. And this may sound very, very strange because, well, usually if you connect something to your outlet, you get power out of it to operate a device. But in this case, it's the other way around. 
this is your device, but it feeds the energy back into your PowerPoint, into your grid. And with the help of the clamp, it knows exactly how much power you actually need in your grid, because it measures what you would need from the grid. And I will show you this tomorrow. Well, and this is exactly how it would look like then. We've got our two clamps here, which are connected to our both inverters, and they are injecting exactly the same amount you would usually use from your grid. And then these inverters are feeding energy back on these two faces here and power my entire house during the night when this one is not working, when I'm allowed to use my battery to power my house. Well, you would say, well, now you need some kind of mechanism to turn them on and off during the day. And this is exactly right. And this is what the, um, and this is, well, this is what the, um, what the Sonoff devices are for. I've got this, I've got this Wild West set up here at the moment with an RCD here, safety switch connected to my grid. And on the other side is the son off. And as soon as I turn this one on, the inverter will turn on and start feeding energy back into the house. Little test installation. This is not how it will look like. We will have this all in a little switchboard here with a safety switch and the son off. And this will all be nicely connected to our power grid here and also to the inverter, of course. And with the Sonoff here, we can program this one with timers. So it turns on at five o'clock in my case here now, and then turns off in the morning again at about six o'clock when my solar starts working again. And I'm not allowed to use my battery to power my house anymore because this one will take over and power the house then. Well, these inverters are not new on the market. They are, well, you can at least, you can at least buy them for the last three years or so. But the software is brand new on these devices. This is version 6.1, if anyone is interested. These inverters come in two versions, a 1000 watt and a 2000 watt device. So as per your needs, you buy the device which suits your loads. And the quite interesting thing about these inverters is that you actually can stack them. You can parallel as many of these inverters as you want, and they don't need to communicate with each other. The only thing you need to do is you need to connect all these clamps in the right direction across your line. So you can have multiple clamps on one cable measuring the same incoming energy. And the inverters will regulate themselves and make sure there is no power coming from the grid and there is no power going out to the grid. Well, and if you have two of them in parallel, you already have a four kilowatt system powering this one phase going into your house. But let me show you in tomorrow's video how this inverter works. I want to connect two solar panels to the inverter as well. We put them outside on the driveway here and see how much power we can generate and how much power we can inject into the grid powering the house then. All right, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your support. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about this solution. It may not be the final solution, but at least for the next couple of years, hopefully, until the contract runs out and then we are free to install a hybrid inverter. Yes, then we can do it because we will talk about this in a later video, I guess. <laughs> All right, stay charged, stay safe, and we shall see us again tomorrow in the next video when we start testing this inverter here and explain exactly how it works and what it does. Okay, guys, thanks for watching again. See you then. Bye-bye.